today, Auntie Nina is going to read us a story of scrambled eggs super. I don't like to brag and I don't like to boast, said Peter T. Hooper. But speaking of toast and speaking of kitchens and ketchup and cake and kettles and stoves and the stuff people bake. Well, I don't like to brag, but I'm telling you, Liz, that speaking of cooks, I'm the best that there is. Why, only last Tuesday, when Mother was out, I really cooked something worth talking about. You see, I was sitting here, resting my legs, and I happened to pick up a couple of eggs. And I sort of got thinking, it's sort of a shame that scrambled eggs always taste the same. And that's because and that's because ever since goodness knows when, they've always been made from the eggs of a hen. Just a plain common hen. What a dumb thing to use with all of the other fine eggs that you can choose. And so I decided that just for a change, I'd scramble a new kind of egg on the range. Some fine fancy eggs that no other cook can cook, like the eggs of the ruffle-necked salamagooks. And salamagooks say they should be good. So I went out and found some as quick as I could. And while I was lugging them back to the house, I happened to notice a tizzle-topped grouse in a tree down the street. And I knew from her looks that her egg and the egg of a salamagooks ought to mix mighty well or to taste simply super when scrambled together by Peter T. Hooper. So I took those eggs home and I fizzled them up and I added some sugar, two thirds of a cup and a small pinch of pepper and also a pound of horseradish sauce that was sitting around and also some nuts then I tasted the stuff and it tasted quite fine but not fine enough to make the best scrambled eggs that have ever been made a cook has to hook the best eggs ever laid so I drove to the country quite rather far out and I studied the birds that were flitting about. I looked with great care at a mop-noodled finch. I looked at a beagle-beaked bald-headed grinch. And I also, I looked at a shade-roosting quail who was roosting right under a lasalac's tail. And I looked at a spritz and a flannel-winged jay. But I just didn't stop. I kept right on my way. Because they didn't have eggs. They weren't laying that day. Then suddenly, boy, up that hill a short space. Birds! They were laying all over the place. Great, happy, gay families with uncles and cousins all laying fine, strictly fresh eggs by the dozen. Why, I'd have a scramble more super than super. Scrambled eggs, super de duper de booper, special deluxe a la Peter T. Hooper. I picked out the eggs in a most careful way. I only picked those that I knew were grade A. I only took eggs from the very, very best fowls. So I didn't take eggs from the twiddler owls, because I knew that the eggs of those fellows who twiddle taste sort of like dust from inside a brass fiddle. I went from the kind that were mellow and sweet and the world's sweetest eggs are the eggs of the quiet, which is due to those very sweet trout that they eat. And those trout, well, they're sweet because they only eat wogs. And wogs, after all, are the world's sweetest frogs. And the reason they're sweet is Whenever they lunch, it's always the world's sweetest bees that they munch. 
and the reason no bees can be sweet eat blossoms of bezel nut trees and these bezel nut blossoms are sweeter than sweet and that's why i nabbed several eggs from the queen but i passed up the eggs of a bird called a strudel who's sort of a stork but with fur like a poodle for they say that the eggs of this kind of stork are gooey like glue and they stick to your fork and the yolks of these eggs i am told taste like fleece while the whites taste like very old bicycle grease ew the places i hiked to the roads that i rambled to find the best eggs that i have ever scrambled i hunted new birds along wild tangled trails through gullies and gulches down diggles and dales i wriggled my way and i crawled out a creep through a forest of ferns that was 40 miles deep and i mushed through the brush till i found a fine quigger whose eggs are as big as a pinhead and no bigger then i went for the eggs of a long legger quang now this quang well she built just a little bit wrong for her legs are so terribly terribly long that she has to lay eggs 20 feet in the air and they drop with a plop to the ground from up there so unless you catch them before the eggs crash you haven't got eggs you've got long legger hash eggs I'd collected 302, but I still needed more. And I suddenly knew that the job was too big for one fellow to do. So I telegraphed north to some friends near Fazol, which is 10 miles or so just beyond the north, just beyond the north pole. And they, all of them, jumped in their katama side which is sort of a boat made of sea leopard's hide, which they sailed out to sea to go looking for grice, which is sort of a bird which lays eggs on the ice, which they grabbed with a tool which is known as a squitch, because those eggs are too cold to be touched without witch. And while they were sending those eggs, I got word of a bird that does something that's almost unheard of. It's hard to believe, but this bird's called the palf. Lays eggs that are three, three times as big as herself. How that palf ever learned of a difficult trick, I never found out. But I found that egg very quick. And I managed to get it down out of the nest and home to the kitchen along with the rest. But I didn't stop then, cause I knew of some ducks by the name of the single file Zoomzian Zucks, who stroll single file through the mountain of Zums, quite oddly enough, quite oddly enough with their eggs on their thumbs, and some fellows in Zums whom I happen to know, just happened to capture a thousand or so. And they wrapped up their eggs and they mailed them by air, marked special delivery, handle with care. I needed more helpers. And so, for assistance, I called up a fellow named Ali, long distance. And Ali, as soon as he hung up the phone, picked up a small basket and started alone to climb the steep crags and the jags of Mount Struku to fetch me the egg of a Mount Struku cuckoo. Now, these Mount Struku cuckoo are rather small gals. But these Mount Struku cuckoos, but these Mount Struku cuckoos have lots of big pals. They dived from the skies with wild cackling shrieks and they jabbed at his legs and they stabbed at his cheeks. 
with their yammering, clamoring, hammering beaks. But Ellie, brave Ellie, he fought his way through and he sent me that egg as I knew he would do. For my scrambled eggs, super de duper de pooper, special deluxe a la Peter T. Hooper. In the meanwhile, of course, I was keeping real busy collecting the eggs of the three eyelash tizzy. They're quite hard to reach, so I rode on the top of a hum icky schnim icky schnum icky schnop. Then I found a great flock of southwest facing cranes, and I guess they've got something that's wrong with their brains. For this kind of a crane, when she's guarding her nest, will always stand facing precisely southwest. So, to get at these eggs wasn't hard in the least. I came from behind, from precisely north And I captured the egg of a grickly cactus who lays them up high on a prickly cactus. Ouch. Then I went for some zips. They're actually like zuffs. But the Zuffs live on cliffs and the Zuff live on bluffs. And seeing how bluffs are exactly like cliffs, it's mighty hard telling the Zuffs from the Zuffs. But I know that the egg that I got from the bluffs, if it wasn't a Zuffs from the cliffs, it was a Zuffs. Now I needed the egg of a moth watching Sniff, who's a bird who's so big. She scares people to death. And this awful big bird, well, the reason they name her the moth watching Sniff is because they know they tame her. She likes watching moths, sort of quiets her mind. And while she's watching, you sneak up behind and you yank out her egg. So I got one, of course, with the help of some friends and a very fast horse. If you want to get eggs that you can't buy at a store, you have to do things you've never thought of before. Why to get at the eggs of one very small dwarf? We had to pry all of one mountain top off. I still needed one more and I saved it for last. The egg of the frightful bombastic aghast. And that bird is so mean and that bird is so fast. That I had to escape on a Jill Ica Jost. A fleet footed beast who can run like a deer, but looks sort of different. You steer him by ear. All through with the searching, all through with the looking. I had all I need, and now for the cooking. I rushed to the kitchen, the place where I'd stacked them. I rolled up my sleeve, I unpacked them and cracked them. I shucked them and chucked them in 99 pans. Then I mixed in some beans. I used 55 cans. Then I mixed in some ginger, nine prunes, three figs and parsley. Quite parsley. Just 22 sprigs. Then I added six cinnamon sticks and a clove. And my scramble was ready to go on the stove. Op jouw eieren niet zo sterk. En kom, gerust naar ons toe. En ons, neem jou onder ons vlaar. Weet jij te veel gerust? En oefening gemis? Ons doen wat oefeningen om ons oogjes en ons oorkies sterk te houden. Werken kan jou lijf En dan voel je nooit weer stijfie.
ons kan makkelijk met jou zoom. Besoek gerus ons webblad en onthou ons storytijd om 12 uur elke dag op Giving Children Room, sy YouTube kanaal. So that's not all. Give us a call because Giving Children Wings offers all these services in English.